Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to our very first homeschool trivia class. I'm Randy Smith from Peanut Butter Fish Lessons and I have Katie Wolf below me here from the Wolfpack Den. And I'm gonna let her introduce herself, but while she does that, go ahead and post in the comments um, just something about yourself, where you're from, how many kids you're homeschooling, something you learned this week, anything like that. All right, while you guys are doing that, I'll introduce myself. My name is Katie, and like Randy said, I have the Wolf Pack. And I wanna say happy National Pumpkin Day to everybody. I love national days and all of the weird celebrations and holidays and stuff like that, which is um, kind of one of the reasons we started this trivia because we both enjoy things like that. So happy national pumpkin day. And tomorrow I was looking up, let's see, it's Teddy Roosevelt's birthday is tomorrow. What else do we have on the schedule? Yesterday was, it was another birthday. It was Pablo Picasso's birthday. In a couple of days, we have National First Responders Day, and then a couple more days. But I know we all know we have Halloween, but you know what other day it is on Halloween, what it actually is? Anybody, does anybody know? Look, I'm asking a trivia question. It's not even time yet. It's not even one of your questions. You're just thrown out. I know. I, no, I was just trying. Yeah, it's actually Nevada's birthday. Oh. Who knew? How did I not come up with that? I don't know. It's it's Nevada's birthday. So, you know, We're I love good. it. I love all the, and I love special birthdays. That's one of the things I absolutely totally love is like, because it gives you like the perfect way to celebrate something and learn about something historical. So like president's mm -hmm. birthdays and state birthdays, stuff like that. I love. I agree. It gives you a little something to learn each day. New. Yeah. We have lots of people. We have Elle from Oklahoma and Elle has 39 chickens. That's a lot Ooh, of chickens. Yeah, it is. Lane that's Hansen a lot of chickens. From Georgia that likes gaming, JC. We have, oh, and Shell likes gaming too. And we have some that joined us and spoken Spanish. Oh, you, you know some Spanish, Katie. El Diaz de los, oh, maybe she was guessing a holiday. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And she's right though too. Yes, she is. Yes. I have that in my a little mini unit study about that in my holidays around the world. We have Sylvia and she has two cats. We've got Reese from Pittsburgh and we and we have a family from Nevada. Look at that. Oh, but and they have Halloween off because it's Nevada Day. There you go. There you go. Very cool. All right, we are gonna go ahead and get started with our trivia. So if you downloaded our pumpkin mini unit study last week and did it, you should know three of these. I always say should in air quotes though, cause you know, it's not what real life is, right? It should. So, but there's two that are gonna be brand new to you anyway. So let's get started. First of all, where did pumpkins originate from? Did they originate in Russia, Canada, Egypt, or Mexico? So you can put your answer in the chat. You can put the letter. You can put the name of the country. Where did pumpkins first originate from? I think I know this one. And then I'm going to read through our thread here. We have Ashley from Kansas. Shell says Egypt, Lily says Mexico. The chat's moving so fast. We got another Egypt, we got another Mexico, Egypt, Mexico, and then we got a Canada. All right. No one's think. saying Russia. Nope, nobody thinks it's Russia. Hmm. They're All on right. land. I think everybody's done answering Mexico is the answer oops let me flip my slide mexico is the answer pumpkins used to grow wild in mexico hmm. and gotta click my notes up here they were a wild plant in mexico and central america all right 
moving on. What group do pumpkins belong to or groups? Could be more than one. Do they, are they a fruit? Are they a vegetable and a squash? Are they a fruit and a squash? Or are they just a vegetable? So what do you see, think? We've got C, fruit and squash. We've got, we've got a couple of those. We've got a vegetable, we've got a fruit and squash. We've got a three-year-old that says a vegetable. A three-year-old probably knows. We got a poster on pumpkin nutrition. So I'm sure you know the correct answer. Oh, well now I wanna ask that person. Yeah. Because I'm sitting here looking at the answers thinking, is there a difference between a vegetable and a squash? I didn't even think there was. Well, so that no, not necessarily, right? Something can right. belong to multiple groups in a hierarchy. Mm. All right. I think we have all our answers. And the correct one is fruit and squash. So the re what makes it a squash or one of the things that makes it a squash is it has a hard rind or skin and you eat the inside of it. And what makes it a fruit is it is the seed bearing part of a plant, meaning it's the part of the plant where the seeds will be. That's where you'll find them. You cut it open, you find the seeds that makes it a fruit. And is it Shell or Isabel has it right? I think she told me her name's Isabel at some point, but the chat is going very fast. So good job. All right. This one was not in our mini unit study and it's not multiple choice. How many pounds do you think the largest pumpkin ever grown was? You're just going to have to take a guess. How many pounds was the largest pumpkin ever? L. L. I got you, Shell. L. Not Shell. L. We'll see if I can keep that straight. All right, Al says 2,767 pounds. Mm -hmm. That's a specific number. What do you think, Katie? I was thinking 1,000 pounds. Right around 1,000. Okay, we got 100, we got 800, we got 3,145, we got 2,600, we have 200. We are all over the place. But we do have some that are very close. Let's see. L is very close, and JC <laughs> is very close. All right, and then we got a 3,000 pounds. All right, the answer is 2,749 pounds. So if you're having trouble picturing that, that is like a small car, okay? Picture a small car, that is the biggest pumpkin, and it just happened a couple weeks ago. Um, the record before this was in Italy, and actually a man grew it in Minnesota. Who knows why that is shocking? Why should we be shocked that the largest pumpkin in the world was grown in Minnesota? What do you think? You might also want to think they originally grew in Mexico. So you might want to think about the difference between Mexico and Minnesota. Yes, Dana says there's a short growing season in Minnesota, right? Mexico has a long growing season, right? It gets cold early and pumpkins need a long growing season. They grow a huge vine that's like 20 to 30 feet long. The pumpkins got to grow, they got to ripen. So yes, but this man, Travis, I don't know how to say his name, Guyinger, Google his name or largest pumpkin, whatever. You'll see a picture. I don't want to use the picture here because it's copyrighted. Um, he grew it and he works at like an agricultural college or something. So wow. he knows what he's doing. I want right. to know, I want to know how close Elle was. She said 2,767 pounds. Yes. And we had somebody, at, did she? So yeah, she's just a few pounds off. Yeah. And that 2,600 Super. was close too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. JC. Mm-hmm. All right, two more pumpkin questions. 
where are the most pumpkins grown each year? So it's like as of, you know, the last 10 years or so, where are the most grown each year? Is it China? Is it the United States? Is it Russia? Or is it Mexico? All right, we got China, we got the US, we got the US. Oh, that's L twice. We got, but we do have the US again. We got the US again. Lots of people cheering for the US here. <laughs> Mexico maybe still, we got China. Nobody's thinking Russia again. All right, are all the answers in? We got a five-year-old that says the US and an eight-year-old, this is China. I wanna say when I read Randy's slides, I did not get this one right by a long shot. I will say Ashley, one of Ashley's kids has it right, but which kid is it? It is your eight-year-old. China is the answer. And I told Katie when I did our watermelon unit study this summer, I found out that watermelons are mostly grown in China as well. So I have a hunch a lot. That would be the answer to a lot of foods. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. A lot of the watermelons and pumpkins that we consume or that we um, purchase, are they from China or are we? I didn't dig like, that we... deep into it. It's a good question. It I just, is I'm good like, question. <laughs> Tell me we're growing enough pumpkins for our, you know, our own needs, but I don't know. That's Well, I will I tell you the state that grows the most in the United States oh. is Illinois. Huh. So we do, we do grow a bunch. So hopefully we're growing our own or maybe some come up from Mexico. I'm hoping we're not shipping them across. Yeah. Like on a yeah, container. The ocean. That sounds crazy. Yes. And let's see, India grows the second is in second place for most grown. So just to give you a little fact here, there are, t they don't measure number of pumpkins grown each year, they measure pounds. So there's 25 million tons of pumpkins grown each year in the world. And about a third are grown in China. And then India comes in second place. So two thirds are not grown in China. Let's see. Alice says all these pumpkins are from the USA. I was gonna say, we've, we've got to check our labels to find out. And yes, local farms. Dana got hers from a local farm. I will admit ours yeah. came from Publix this year. My kids are old. They don't want to go to a pumpkin farm. <laughs> okay. Pumpkin patches are fun though, <laughs> for sure. So, mine came from Publix. Sure, All right. Do that, do that when your kids are little, because I don't want to do it when they hit their teens. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to have to borrow some else's kids. All right. This was not in the unit study. But we hear about pumpkin spice. You might hear about pumpkin spice bread or pumpkin spice lattes, pumpkin spice muffins. What does that mean? Is pumpkin a spice? No. Okay. It is a blend of spices. My question to you is which of these spices is not in pumpkin spice blend? Okay. Cinnamon, cloves, nutmeg, oregano so three of those are in pumpkin spice and one is not this was too easy too easy you all know oregano is not in pumpkin spice but i will tell you you are missing two others let's see what they are pumpkin has those three and then it has ginger and sometimes all spice all right, we are gonna shift to candy corn. I need to take my slide down. While I do that, we probably need a little movement break, kids. So what I want you to do is I want you to pretend you have a pumpkin in your hands, okay? You might have a little pumpkin in your hands. You might have a big pumpkin in your hands. All right, so put your hands around however big your pumpkin is. Does it have a small circumference or a big circumference and then is it is it a light pumpkin could you lift it up or is it a big heavy pumpkin maybe you have to get your lower body under it oh somebody says they've got a wolf pack shirt on 
I know. I saw that. Maybe. Are you from North Carolina? Because I'm in Charlotte, if you're from North Carolina. Um, all right. Are you still holding Wait, your pumpkin? You see what's like. down. Now, remember, if you've got a big, heavy pumpkin, you can't just set it anywhere. You don't want to squish something. All right. Al's got a 32-inch I can't even picture what that means. <laughs> pumpkin. All right. Or maybe you picked up a real pumpkin. That would be good. So go ahead and set your pumpkin somewhere where it's going to be safe. Sorry, Katie, I forgot to add your slides. Okay. Chip is not in North Thank, Okay. Just likes the wolf pack. All right. If everybody has their pumpkin down, I think we're ready to get started. Okay. So we're moving on to candy corn. So starting at the top, in which order do the colors appear in a piece of candy corn? Now, I know that in the store you can find some strangely colored candy corn, but we're talking about the classic candy corn. That's a, the original candy corn. It's been around a long time. Is it white, yellow, orange, white, orange, yellow, yellow, orange, white, or orange, white, yellow? All right, we've got a B. Lot We've bees. got somebody that changed their mind. Changed their mind. <laughs> got some D's. I did show a picture at the very beginning too, and actually, that's okay. Right yeah, no, me. no, it's you know, it's. Let's see. All right, let's go. Let's see. Mm, it is B. So it's white, orange, yellow. That is the classic. And for several years. These were done by hand because candy corn's been around a long time. Let's see. Do I have it? Yeah, in the 1800s, the late 1800s hmm. is when they came up with candy corn. So today, machines do the work, but it used to be they had to like literally make the layers by hand. So, yes. All right, let's do our next question. Oh, I shouldn't have said this. <laughs> but now, let's make you do math. See, I was just trying to talk too much. When was candy corn first created? Now you have to do a math question, though. If you remember what I said, you can do math and figure it out. Was it about 50 years ago? Over 200 years ago? Barely 10 years ago? Or my slides? Ah! My slides covering it. Now I went off of it. Sorry. My look, the little other. Oh, mm, sorry. I'll get this figured out. The answer is more than 100 years ago. So candy corn's been around a long time time and let's learn a little bit more so there you go it was originally created by somebody in philadelphia over 140 years ago but it was this other company and i don't want to make their name sound wrong so i'm not sure how to say it but it was a company that used to exist that's now known as the jelly belly company which you've probably heard of that make jelly bellies they started making it in the late 1800s and they're credited with um making it popular so that's it's been around a long time oh, you just finished a unit study on candy corn very nice i love it all right next question candy corn used to be called something else was it corny candy tricolor candy candy popcorn or chicken feed this was my favorite one when you had me look over your slides mm -hmm. corny candy tricolor candy candy corn i'm sorry candy popcorn or chicken feed ell knows because she did the unit study right no a All different right. family did our family did oh somebody else did. oh well, Elle thinks that she knows it's chicken feed. We got lots of chicken feed and we got one corny candy and one tri-color candy. Mm -hmm. And a candy popcorn. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I kind of, I, I like that one. Candy popcorn. That sounds, that sounds a lot more appetizing to me than chicken feed. <laughs> Elle did That's do the unit study too. So. Oh, okay. All right, so the answer is chicken feed. Now, there's a reason for it. It was just, candy corn came out at a time where most Americans were working on farms. 
Um, and so they actually called it that because kind of it was a play on words because corn was not something that people were eating at that time. It was considered more like food for your animals. And so it was like trying to like make a play on like, you know, something you'd feed to your, your animals. So it was called chicken feed. And it even had a funny box or box with a funny rooster on it with a funny saying. So chicken feed is what it was. But it was not used as chicken feed, right? That was just the no. Name it was not used as chicken. No, 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 no. It was. It was for people. It was. It was like it was one of those penny. They call it penny candies in the store. Mm -hmm. Like it was super yeah. cheap. Kids were able to buy it. Um, yeah, but no, it was not for chickens. It was definitely for people. But that's what they called it. All right. Do more people love or hate candy corn? This is a this is a loaded this could be a loaded question. I more did people a love Instagram. Oh, ha, ha. more people hate candy corn. It's about the same, or nobody loves candy corn. And actually, in the chat, if you want to say if you like candy corn, go for it. Let's see what you guys think about it. I have a guess based on my Instagram poll today, but that might, you know, well. That's a, you know, I have information for that guy. Yeah. So might not well, be fair you know, to share and, and it. A lot, of, a lot of what we pull from the internet is just information. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> who knows? When it comes to pulling, right. yes. Well, I've got, we've got some, lots of different answers. Some people like it. Some people don't like it. Some people think it's more people hate candy corn or it's about the same. All right. Let's find out. So it's actually, I decided to say it's more people love candy corn and it's about the same. Cause let me show you. 48% of people love it and 47% of people hate it. So I consider that about the same, but obviously it's a tiny bit more of the people love it. So it's a very divisive kind of candy in the country <laughs> and among families. And, you know, I don't know if you do Halloween and, and pass out candy for trick or treaters. Some trick or treaters may not like candy corn if you pass it out to them. So it can be a hot debate. Hot button right. issue. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Oh, how many pieces of candy corn are in this jar? This is a real jar. I should have brought it with me, but I took pictures of it. I filled it up. I counted it. You've got measurements there. So you can see how tall it is. The base is a square. So you can see. I have never been good at these. You know, it's funny. I don't think I'm good at them either. But when I was little, I won a huge bunny rabbit for guessing jelly beans at the mall for, and uh, yeah, and I won. Fun. Sure, I could our, do it again today. Yeah, our library bed. always has one in our kids section of whatever the theme is that you can, yeah. you can yeah. guess. Yeah. But, you know. There's, you could be a little mathematical about it. You can see, you mm -hmm. can actually kind of on the picture, you could actually kind of measure how much, how long a candy corn is and go from there. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got some 50s, got 100. Lots of hundreds. We do have one. I think I saw one that said 300. Lots of hundreds. Interesting. Lots of hundreds. All right. It was 100. I was so excited when it came out to be exactly 100. Now, I could have taken one or two out, and I probably could have shoved one more in. But, I mean, it was filled to the brim before I put that lid on. So, you can see in the picture right there. It's, like, filled to the brim. I couldn't believe it. It was like, oh, it's like, well, that's a good number. Good. Yeah. All right. Thanks for participating in my candy corn questions. By the way, I do not. Yes, that was my last one. I do not like candy corn. Do you, Randy? No, definitely not. Nope. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Strong feelings about that. <laughs> As a matter of fact, when I bought the candy corn, everyone was like, why are you buying candy corn for this house? I'm like, because I need to have, I need to count it, put it in a jar. So now it's like decor, autumn yeah. decor. That's all right. It's colorful. It's pretty. Yeah. yeah. All right. We are going to shift to our current event. So each week we're gonna have some kind of current event theme. 
And so this week we are doing a bunch of space questions. And I actually meant to double check. I think the website is space.com. I'm going to check right here for you. Yes. If you ever want to know what like is going on new and what we're learning about space, you can go to space.com and they have tons of articles. So not necessarily, you know, like videos for younger kids, but if you've got older students or you want to, you know, read and share information with your kids, space.com is a great place for it. All right. So this was in our student news and this is what set off our whole space theme. There's a new video that lets viewers fly through Mars's labyrinth of the night. So my question to you is, what do you think the labyrinth of the night is? Is it a yearly eclipse? Is it a system of steep valleys? Is it a never ending storm? Or is it a polar ice cap? So it looks like we've got L says a system of steep valleys. We got a bunch of that. We got a, some polar ice caps. So I had my 14 year old help me write this question for you. We got polar ice cap. So he brainstormed the wrong answers for you, which was kind of a fun brainstorming activity. <laughs> Never ending storm. All right, let's see. Oops, did I go too fast? I did. It is a system of steep valleys. So if you want to go watch this video, this is what the cover looks like. But it is on YouTube. And just Google bar labyrinth of night on YouTube. And you should be able to find it and then fly across it. All right. Can I add, something? Can I add, add that one thing, Randy? Sure. Um, in November is, I think it's called Red Planet Day, and it's um, I think November 28th. And when I was doing a page for that, it was talking about how the valley that they have and the, like the, well, they call it like the canyon compared to the Grand Canyon. It's like mm -hmm. astronomically, like they can't even compare the, the size difference of the two. Um, and the same thing with like, the tallest mountain or volcano or whatever they call it, like just the the vastness of what Mars has compared to what we have in terms of land formations was crazy. Yes, you know what? I did not make notes about the size. Let's I see have... if I can pull it up really quick. Let's see. The oh, that's right. So the length of the valley is about the length of Italy. So yeah. that was the one thing I had read. It's 19 miles wide. So yes, and then you were talking about the depth is mm -hmm. much deeper than Grand Canyon, maybe. Let me see if I have it. Or maybe it was maybe it was the length too. Okay, maybe the length. Yeah. The length of Italy is pretty long. So all right, moving on. There is a new movie out called A Million Miles Away, and this is PG. So I double checked that before I put it in here. So, you know, whether or not kids could watch it. So it is PG. What is it about? Is it about the creation of the International Space Station? Is it about the moon landing? Is it a mission to Mars? Or is it about a man who went from being a farm worker to an astronaut? What do you think it is? Ooh, our family saw the movie. I'm glad to know we have not gotten to it yet. It's on my oh. list. Has your family seen oh, the, the movie, author. maybe? No, I want to, though. I love that actor, too. Mm. All right. So we have lots of Ds. We got 1A, the creation of the International Space Station. We got one, it's about a mission to Mars. And D is correct. Here's, here's the actor there. A man who went from being a farm worker, actually in Mexico, to becoming an astronaut. And he went, let's see, his name is Jose Hernandez, excuse me. 
He flew on the space shuttle in 2009 and spent 13 days on the International Space Station. So you will get to learn a little bit about that. It's rated PG and it's streaming on Amazon Prime and it is a full two hour movie. So schedule accordingly. All right. Has anybody heard of the Lucy spacecraft? Lucy is going to visit her first specimen on November 1st. So that's next Wednesday, right? What is Lucy exploring? Is she going to the moon to explore different places? And just so you know, there's no people on this spacecraft. It's just a spacecraft named Lucy. So is Lucy going to the moon, Mars, different asteroids, or different parts of Venus? Al thinks Lucy's going to visit some asteroids. Lots of asteroids. Ashley's eight-year-old says the asteroids. Calvin says the asteroids. Some Venuses. We got some Venuses, we got Mars. All would be cool places, right? For Lucy to travel. It's not, it's not a bad answer here. All right. So the majority got it. It is different asteroids. Oh. So the first asteroid she's going to fly by, its nickname, I'm hoping I'm saying this right, is Dinkin Mesh. And it's in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. So if you've learned about the asteroid belt, that's where it is. And then it's going to go on and visit the Trojan asteroids. And the Trojan asteroids actually travel in the same orbit that Jupiter travels in. It's not, they're not too close to Jupiter, but the, it's just in that same orbit. So Lucy is going to be flying to the asteroid belt and the Trojan asteroids. Venus is too dangerous. Yes, probably. Maybe someday we could make a spacecraft that could go there. Definitely too dangerous for people, as would be going out to the asteroid belt. All right. What country just completed a test this month in preparation for its first ever astronaut mission? Do we think it's India? Do we think it's Canada? Katie's excited about this. Do I thought on the name of Okay, do we think it's Saudi Arabia or do we think it's Brazil? And when I mean the news, I mean scrolling by on my Alexa. <laughs> Oops, I didn't put notes on here. I meant to put notes about which countries have sent people. Mm. I know obviously US and Russia have sent people. I'm trying to think if anybody else has. Do you want me to look? All right, we've got we've got a whole lot of India guesses. Maybe maybe lots of people have been watching the news. We got Canada. All right, I think a lot of people have been watching the news because it is India. You are correct. All right, one more question. Last question of the day. The Orionid, I have to think before I say that word each time, meteor shower was this past weekend. It wasn't one of the best ones to view, but it was this past weekend. So my question to you is what are meteors? Are they chunks of rock or metal falling through space? Are they shooting stars? Are they both of those? Or are they none of those? What do you think meteors are? All right, we've got, actually we have a lot of votes for chunks of rock or metal falling through space. But Ash's five-year-old says they're shooting stars. We got both R said A. We got lots and lots of A's. Well, I will tell you that Ashley's kids are both correct because it is both 
of the above. They are chunks of rock or metal falling through space and it's what we call shooting stars. So there you go, shooting stars are not really stars. Um, yes, okay, the R family is correcting, correcting themselves. So you might now wonder, what's the difference between a meteor and an asteroid, which we just talked about with the Lucy yes, crack? Do you know? No, I'm wondering. You are wondering. Okay. Well, the difference is that a meteor enters the Earth's atmosphere and burns up. So basically the same thing, but we call it a meteor if it enters our atmosphere. And then if it does that, it burns up. If it stays out there and orbits around the sun, then it stays an asteroid. So it's the same thing. It's just depending on where it is. Gives it a different name. Okay. And right, asteroids, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my, my complete ignorance when it comes to space. So asteroids are su not supposed to, but like they're traveling. They're orbiting the sun. And then mm -hmm. if something clicks them off of that, then they end up somewhere and it's a problem. Yeah. What, what makes them leave their orbit? Now, that's a question I don't have the answer for off the top of my well, head. Well, in the movies, it's a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, it could get hit by something, but I'm thinking there might be more reasons. Yeah. There's a big asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter where there's lots of asteroids and their own orbit. And then there's some that like orbit with Jupiter. And then there's some way out. So, yeah. Interesting. All right. Let me take us to the last slide where I say thank you for joining us. We are so glad that so many joined us today. We had 20 people join us. That's awesome. Yay, I love that's it's wonderful. We were I worried that we were going to make our kids have to do it if no one came. Okay. Don't pretend we're going to. I told my kid to sit there and watch and make sure people were commenting and then he could leave, but that he should stay. <laughs> Did he? We'll, we'll see if he stayed. So anyways, before, before we wrap up, today's questions came from our pumpkin mini unit study and from Katie's informational text. Do you want to tell us just a little bit about your informational text? Yes. So like I said, I love the national days and different holidays and birthdays and stuff like that. So I always make a, a resource that has a reading passage and I actually have writing prompts too for every day of the month. Um, obviously, I don't do most days have more than one thing to celebrate. I just choose one. So um, candy corn was one of the ones for October and I just published the November one. So I've got that ready as well. So I love doing this. Like and I learned so many random things. Fun. Awesome. Yeah. And so if you, can you drop your link to your free one? If you want to try um, Katie's, if you have not tried them, she's giving four. So yes. four of them away for free. Yeah, every month I give away four of the reading passages and four of the writing prompts that go together. Um, so I will, yeah, hang on. I'm just going to drop that in the thread here, that link in the thread. Yeah. Um, and next week, our trivia is coming from my full moon mini unit study, which is free this week. I'm going to drop that in the thread here. And so Katie, your topic for next week is in this free pack or did I... Yes, yeah. it's jelly. I, it won't let me join the chat. Okay. I'll Can send you it send you. it to me in the private chat? Mm -hmm. Okay. Katie's going to send it to me in the private chat and I will put it in the chat. I'm I think not technically logged in. No. All right. If I'm going to, I'll tell you what. Do you have to sign happen? off and we will get it in there in just a minute? Yeah. Yes. We're so sorry. We're just rambling. All right. All right. Thank you for joining us and we will see you all next week. Hopefully tell your friends to join us too next week. So fun. Bye.